Hey what's up everybody, Trofinit here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. I hope everybody's staying safe in this, these troublesome times. My heart goes out to everyone who's been affected by this uh, horrible coronavirus. But uh, I'm hoping that I can provide a little bit of uh, entertainment in these harsh times. But back to the video. In my last video I talked about the issues I have with the Nilfgaardian faction, but attentive viewers will have also noticed that I had a lot of positive things to say as well. One of my favorite aspects of Nilfgaard remains Assimilate, and I wanted to see if I could make a viable deck around it while still adding something new. As you know, Assimilate units are boosted every time you play a card that was not in your starting deck. This lets you double down on playing copies of your own cards or of those of your opponent. It makes sense then that this deck is full of cards that let you do just that. But I've added some high risk, high reward tactics to it, which make this deck really fun to play if you manage to pull off some of the wilder combos. The main card responsible for this madness is Angoulême. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the Angoulême's revenge deck. Angoulême is a peculiar card that rarely sees play outside of the occasional tournament match. If you've never read the books, you might not be familiar with Angoulême as a character. Without spoiling too much, she's a former bandit who is rescued by Geralt at some point and joins his company in search of Ciri. She's as handy with a blade as she is with her wit, which often lands her into trouble. In Gwent, she allows you to play an artifact card from your opponent's starting deck, or at least a copy of it. And that's where things get interesting. Before Merchants of Ophir, Angoulême was rarely usable. After all, if your opponent didn't have a single artifact in their deck, she would just be a 3 power unit that did absolutely nothing. Merchants of Ophir however added scenario cards, powerful artifacts that spawned extra cards depending on which cards you play. A lot of decks these days include their faction scenario card because of its immense power and ability to play multiple cards in the same turn. With Angoulême, you can copy these with impunity. She remains a very high risk, high reward card however. If your opponent doesn't run artifacts, Angoulême still does nothing. If you do manage to copy a scenario card however, things start to kick off because of Assimilate. More on that in a minute. Aside from Angoulême, the rest of this deck is a straightforward but still very powerful Assimilate focused deck. The Artfane Heavy Cavalry, Imperial Diviner, Artorius Vigo and the Van Morlehem's Cupbearer all boost themselves by one on Assimilate and Glynis Ap Lernak even boosts herself by two each time. These cards are all set up for the real fun in this deck, using your opponent's tactics against them. Assimilate is a blast if you know enough about the other factions to counter their every move with your own cards, often anticipating their tactics because you learn more about their deck composition while you play. Most of these cards, including our leader ability Double Cross, copy cards rather than stealing them, which makes them less binary than some of the other Nilfgaard tactics. Bronze assimilate units in combination with the Duchess informants to copy your opponent's bronze units are perfect for the first round. They give you some solid points and allow you to get a feel for what your opponent is running. Imperial Diplomacy can supplement this by creating a unit from your opponent's entire faction and Artorius Vigo is perfect to keep the assimilate train going by copying an informant and playing another bronze triggering assimilate twice in the process. If you see an interesting unit you can use later, don't forget to use Yennefer's Invocation to put it on top of your deck so you can use it in the next round. You won't win every first round this way, but Assimilate is as much about gathering information as it is about scoring points. The next rounds are where things start to get interesting. The best setup for the later rounds is without a doubt Glynis. I often even trigger Double Cross immediately to buff her up a little, or play Fionn as a defender first to keep her safe. My main follow-up on Glynis is more often than not Leto Kingslayer, who can transform into another Glynis, giving you 4 points for every Assimilate trigger with just 2 units. You can transform him of course in anything else if you see something more useful on your opponent's side of the field. His transformation also counts as a different unit, so he triggers Assimilate whenever he appears on the field too. Once you have your Assimilate unit set up, it's time to start copying. Cantarella is one of my favorite gambles. She allows you to draw the top card from your opponent's deck, so it can't be anything from a lowly 4 provision unit to a full-blown scenario card, triggering Assimilate in the process nonetheless. 
As we said before, Artorias can trigger Assimilate twice if you play him correctly, and our other powerful mage in the deck, Triss Telekinesis, allows you to play a copy of a bronze special card from either player's deck. It's a copy, so it triggers Assimilate on its own, and if you combine it with Diplomacy or Experimental Remedy, you'll trigger Assimilate again, ramping up the points total really, really quickly. Fion also triggers Assimilate because of his extra battle preparation, providing extra points on top of his defender status. And Bribery is still Assimilate's tricky bread and butter, allowing you to create a copy of any card from your opponent's starting deck. You only get three randomly selected options though, so again, very high risk, high reward. Which leads us back to Angoulême. If your opponent runs a scenario card, you're almost guaranteed to win with this deck. The scenario card you copy is played and therefore triggers Assimilate, and on top of that, a lot of scenario cards play their subsequent cards rather than just spawning them, triggering Assimilate even more. Since you play so many cards from your opponent's deck, it's also not a problem to progress your new scenario card, which would be problematic if you played Angoulême in any other deck. It not only gives you the massive advantage of the scenario card, but adds Angoulême's 3 base power and the extra points of Assimilate on top of that since it triggers every time you play a new card. This is the heart of this deck, if you manage to pull it off that is. During recording, you might have noticed already, I had the very bad luck of only facing two opponents with scenarios in the 10 matches I recorded, rendering her useless most of the time. During testing, however, I had some incredible combos which I sadly didn't record since I was still testing out the deck. For example, I was facing a monster deck and pulled the Haunt scenario card from my opponent's deck with Cantarella in the last round. I also had Angoulême still in my hand, allowing me to have two scenario cards on the field at the same time. The resulting carnage on the field could still be controlled because of the abundance of consume units, and on top of that, Priberi gave me the coup de grace by giving me another Detlof higher vampire to feed my hungry consume units with. It was a slam dunk. Basically, during testing I haven't lost a single match using this deck if my opponent ran a scenario card, which of course is a big if. Angoulême even allows you to thrive against Syndicate decks, which are usually a lot harder to assimilate because of the coin mechanic. Having the Passiflora active just allows you to generate points passively without the need for too much coin management yourself. With Angoulême, this is basically the perfect anti-scenario deck, so if you're sick of facing scenarios, this might be a deck you should try out. Even without Angoulême, this deck is pretty powerful, but if you don't want to run her because of her high risk, you can swap her and Fringilla Vigo out for the Masquerade Ball and another Van Morlehem's Hunter. The ball eventually plays two more Fangs of the Empire, which both trigger Assimilate again, without the need for your opponent to play any scenario cards, and adds a little more poison for strategic use. The choice is yours to make. And that's it for today. What do you think about Angoulême's Revenge? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. That's what we're here for after all. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at at TrophyNuts, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is greatly appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Stay safe, and goodbye.